Big Mama, she got a pussy so proper. I made him eat me like a whopper, then I hit him with this chopper. Mm-mm-mm. He was 32. Mm-mm-mm. I took his money too. Mm-mm-mm. I gave his ass the boot. Mm-mm-mm. And baby, you should too. Let me talk to y'all. This is another Snarky Black Girl production, baby. Like, share, and subscribe. Boo. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a quick tip on how to regain your balance after a mental health episode now for those of you guys that started out following me on twitter you know what i'm talking about okay the the moment in history for which i shall not speak of because it was a dark one i had like a full-blown like episode or just whole sitch that took about two years three years to kind of overcome and i want to let you guys know that i didn't do anything to overcome it except sleep sleep that's it i just slept today is july oh it's not july today is actually uh august the 14th and i want to say i began my sleep journey probably about two and a half years ago and at first i couldn't quite sleep through the night because i had a whole bunch of flashbacks and things of that nature and so me working at figuring out how to go to sleep and stay asleep is really really truly and honestly what brought me to this point where i feel good i believe you know, I, I wrote and recorded and remixed and produced my first record ever in life, uh, probably about four months ago, five months ago at this point. And I want to tell y'all, like, the reason I was able to do that is because I actually slept. I bypassed all the outside noise. I found a way to put it out of my mind. It took about three years, but I was able to do it and I feel better. Hey, look, he so phony so i only call him when i'm horny he only answer when he want me he always is funny what the fuck you mean but i'm ready for the real thing and he don't want nothing i guess i'm just blowing off steam it's either my way or the highway sucker niggas go away while rich niggas gravitate the gravity of this depravity is sending me i need a rub free maybe some therapy how about some chemistry i'm trying to be a better me like last week on the third and it was atrocious y'all 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 be ready y'all be ready hercules and athena why you clapping your cheeks up munching my sheets up and turning up your speakers i got your baby daddy blowing out my twitter because he the billy ray to my aretha the only boy who could ever reach her was a son of a preacher i got that nigga kissing on this pussy while i'm blind him I mean, white people, I want to talk to us because, you know, I no longer identify as black. I identify as an enlightened being. I am of a Caucasian aura, but I'm not of a Caucasian aura. I'm of a white aura. Okay, you're of a Caucasian nature, but you might be black on the inside. You might be light skinned, it, but you is still a dork nigga. And I'm talking to my folks out there that have been left behind in terms of the shift and when i say the shift i mean that we are all taking up we're all taking this shift as humanity to become more compassionate to love one another more so to look at one another and to know that i love you you love me and we are one great big family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you don't you wish you could fucking love me too however the song go we're on this shift as a collective to like love one another more but at the same time we are just suffering one another i went to venice beach last week and when i was in venice beach it was the most atrocious experience i'd ever had in all my life i mean i saw so much 
waste. I went to a restaurant called the Venice Ale House that was right next to my hostel. It was not a hotel, it was a hostel, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. I walked to this restaurant to order myself some lunch because I I was hungry. I had driven straight through. I was supposed to stop to get me a little burrito or something, but I didn't do it. And I was super duper hungry. So I get to this restaurant and it's right next door to my my hotel and I order the nachos, the nachos for you, whatever. They was $13. Somehow the price came out to $25, but I digress. We're going to get into that in just a moment. I went and I sat down and I waited for my food to come. And I saw that at the tables ahead of me, there were mountains and mountains of uneaten food. And I was like, okay, they might just be in the restroom because the food looked like it was fresh and it was just really just delivered. It didn't look like anyone had even touched it. And so I sat there for about 10 minutes watching those plates to see if the people would come back and claim them. And they never did. They, they literally didn't dine and dash because we paid before we got served. But at the same time, we sat down and we waited for this food to come. And these people waited for their food to come, paid for it and, and dipped off on it. And they clearly didn't tell the staff because the guy that was serving everybody kept wondering and looking around like, where are they? They left. And so that should, that was red flag number one, but I'd already paid for it. And I was like, I'm super duper hungry, actually, because technically, if it was nasty, I'd have dipped on it too. And I was just kind of like, huh, okay. And then there was a, re- a table that was like, kind of like cat a corner to me. And the little girl looked so miserable. She looked angry bitch I was like why is she so mad and so like I I sat there watching them and the mom was watching me like and I felt like she was about to go off any moment and so the restaurateur came over to talk to them and to bring the girl what was missing off her plate and the mom was like something ain't quite right here like you could hear her trying to address it with the guy and he just wasn't really trying to hear it And so the little girl was like, mommy, no, no, mommy, no. Like you could tell she didn't want to eat that shit. And so they got up and they left, but not before the mom, like, like stared at me and gave me daggers. And I was like, interesting, interesting. So I waited for my food anyway, because again, I was ravenously hungry. I'm not just saying this. I was literally hungry. And so They dropped off my food. My plate was delivered. I get the nachos for you. You can't fuck up nachos. You really just can't. It's chips and cheese. There was this mountain of sour cream on the side of this mountain of guacamole. And I was like, oh, these nachos going to be cold. And I know they're not going to be hitting and smacking on nothing because... They're cold. They're they're absolutely cold. I ended up getting shrimp on top of mine because I wanted a little protein or whatever. I'm technically vegetarian. I don't even eat it. And so when I ate the shrimp this time, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going back vegetarian because that shrimp tasted like vomit. Like, but it didn't just taste like vomit, though. Like, it tasted like that smell when the garbage bag get musty. Like, it smelled like you maybe dropped the shrimp skin in there. And you left it in there for three or four days because you probably didn't take out the garbage. And so you go to lift up the lid and it's funky. Like, like it tasted funky. I was like, why is this food funky? And so I go to dig in and get some of the beans. And the beans are on the bottom of the plate, I guess, maybe to keep it hot. But all that sour cream on top then already cooled everything off. And I tasted those cold. Hold on, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. I tasted those cold black beans that were completely and totally unseasoned and not just I'm not just complaining because they unseasoned because technically if you throw some garlic and onion and a little rosemary and things in the pot you ain't got to season it okay a little lime on top put the, the salt in it you ain't got to season it but at the same time it didn't have none of that in there it was like beans dropped into a pot of water and simmered until they got soft and then I was like they na- they have that same funky garbage bag taste. I was like, why is this so nasty? I couldn't believe it. And so I was like, y'all don't wasted the life of this cow and wasted her cheese and all this damn sour cream. So I felt bad enough to eat it. But I was like, the first bite, I was like, damn, no. 
That's why baby girl was looking at me like that. She was trying to see if I thought this food was nasty too. And so I start looking around and staring at people with the death daggers. I was like, I know y'all not eat. It was technically only one other couple over there, but I was like, like trying to look at him like, is your food good? Like, cause this is disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting. It was actually two, four other people in the re in the restaurant, two, um, two couples. But I was like, this is absolutely disgusting. So I ate half my nachos because I needed the strength because I was like, I'm, I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to come back in because my nachos were $13. I added shrimp. That's $6. That's $19. How did that $19 become $25? And how did the $25 get wasted on this muck? And so I was like, let me go to the ocean real quick. <laughs> I'm going to go bathe in the bask in, in, in the ocean and uh, see if I can go ahead and make myself feel a little better about what's going on. And so I go to get in the ocean and there was so much trash in the motherfucking ocean. I was like, no, why would y'all do this ocean like this? So I was out there and I had my glasses clipped to my to my to my bathing suit thingy majiggy and I thought they were gonna be safe and so I jump into the ocean I'm basking in the in the sea and my glasses end up being you know swept off of me and so if you ask the ocean nice enough the ocean will give you back your shit and so watch Moana you can don't take my word for it the ocean will give you back your shit the ocean is a living breathing being it's willing to share its space with you just ask it nicely to bring your shit back so I was like, Ocean, please bring my glasses back. And it brought me back Oreo wrappers and shit, straws. It was like, I'm trying, girl, but I can't quite find it because all this other shit's in here. And then so as I was in the ocean, I saw this, this seal. I knew it was a seal. I knew it wasn't anything but a seal. I, it was a seal. But I was like, why is that seal so close to the shore in an area that's nowhere near Seal Beach? You know, Seal Beach is where the seals used to be at. And if you want to see the seals, you go to Seal Beach because they don't have to move off of there because all the fish they want is around that area. But this seal who's, I don't know how far away from Seal Beach is over there fishing in, in like, like five feet from me. Seals are harmless, <laughs> but seals are also shark bait. And so I was like, the ocean, it was trying to tell me something. Like I was sitting there like listening to the ocean and watching it do its job, watching it work. And all this like mist and like gurgling bubbles, it was like green. And I was like, the, the ocean has indigestion. The ocean looked like it had indigestion. And so, so I was like, we need to be more cognizant of what's going on here because that ocean water was like poison water. I was like, let me get on out of here because that's that's your belly grumbling and I don't want you trying to upchuck that shit while I'm in here because I don't want to get swept off the sea. I can swim, but I'm not that strong of a swimmer. And so I was like, no, let me go sit on my towel. And I sat out there and I like listened to what the sea was telling me and I, I saw the seal again. And this time I was like, that's definitely a seal because I saw it. And I was like, Again, where there's seals, there are sharks. And, you know, again, if you want to see seals and sharks, you go to that side of the beach. They don't really come out of their territory because they have a territory. The ocean gives them prime property, prime real estate. But why is it that they are struggling and suffering the way that they are? Today, I was out there meditating I was out there meditating, living my best life, unapologetically happy, who won't judge me. And I was out there and I saw this bird in the tree. And the bird looked all disheveled and shit, all wild eyed. To a certain degree, birds just look like that. But birds don't really like look like that, look like that. I was like, why is this bird so desperate looking and so I was like watching it go up the tree and it was looking for food and I thought sure like you you gonna find you some ants or something in that tree anywhere anytime soon but it went all the way to the top and couldn't find not one ant and then it let out like this fucking battle cry like I was like I've heard birds sing before when I lived at my grandma's house, she had a whole bunch of big trees and birds singing in unison is beautiful. You hear the bees humming and shit like nature is absolutely beautiful. And where my grandma lived at, it was perfect. It was fine. But here I was like, I've never heard a, I've never heard a bird cry like that. I was like, that bird was like desperate. 
I was like, okay. And then it flew off. And so I had noticed around here, like my apartment complex became like a humanitarian issue. There were dead birds just everywhere. And I was like, okay, so the dead birds must be because they're eating the poison roaches because they use so much pesticide here. But why is it that they're using so much pesticide potentially that the birds are dying? And then when I saw that bird do that, I was like, oh, they're not dying because of that. They're starving to death. They ain't got the strength to fight off the, the, the Rona the way that we had the strength to fight off the Rona because we killing the cows and eating all this sour cream piled on top of nachos that taste like shit. And so I was like, our karma is coming back for us. But if you follow me on what used to be Twitter, it's now X. Darth Vader done turned it into X, whatever. And so, and I have to say, I believed in Elon Musk at one point, but now it's just gotten to the place where it's ridiculous because the birds are dying, the turtles are dying, the ocean is rebelling, Hawaii is on fire. Jason Momoa cut his ponytail off two years ago. Moana came out in 2015, I want to say. That's my favorite movie for the most part, for the most part, for the most part. My grandmother's a stingray too. And so I like see us like not caring at all about our world and I'm just like what the when did this begin take me back to the origin of how things got this bad and I had to believe that there is a reason that social media became a a concept but what is it about Instagram that makes people fake the motherfucking funk this restaurant that I went to was Instagram famous. They got 7,000 uh, followers or whatever, people taking pictures, and it looks like it's supposed to be this delicious place, but they was like capping. Like, listen, you capping for clout, and you capping for Instagram clout, and you're using this restaurant as a front to steal people's money, and you're throwing away more food than people are eating, and there are homeless people that are out here suffering you out here serving up the the seals fucking shrimp but you're not even taking the the time out to like thank the lord and season it right that you have the ability to be here in this community serving muck okay i saw one of my tea rappers the other day and it says that the only the only reason a merchant that sells food, a restaurateur, the only reason they have in this world to serve you food is because they want your money. They don't love you. If they don't have a brand or if they don't stand for nothing, they don't like you. They just want the money that you bring in here. And so you got to see what type of like value you're actually getting for your buck. Like don't let social media fool you into thinking that these people are different than what they are showing you that they are. Okay, like, like, I just could not believe it. But at the same time, I believed it fully, because I have been a victim before of like, online scams. Listen, they used to only happen to 60 and 70 year olds, because you know, whatever, uh, <laughs> those those uh, Nigerian scammers calling. I'm not just saying that because I love Niger. Listen, I love Niger. I watch Swarm too. But at the end of the day, I was like, I've I worked at the bank in the fraud department, so I know what it looked like when when you're out here just scamming folks and things like that. And a lot of times it did come from Niger. Listen, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In India too, but whatever. People, the Indian accent throws people off already anyway. We, they got they had to rebrand it. But at the same time, the Niger, no, nah, and them niggas, them niggas don't care. Them niggas don't care. So I worked there in like an anti and I've seen older people get scammed out their cash ola. But this newfangled era of scammers are the ones who are ruining the world as we know it. I bought a computer off of this online entrepreneur three years ago. And I was like, it had a lot of kinks and a lot of like, this shit don't really work, what's going on? But I was like, this person has such a good reputation, or so it seemed, I thought I'd drop the cash on the computer anyway, whatever, support black veteran owned businesses, whatever. 
And this fucking computer never worked. I didn't realize that MacBooks were supposed to do so much more until I bought one, you know, legally. Not the backdoor one. I went ahead and I went to the Apple store and dropped my cash. And so I was like, what, now that all this is coming together, I was like, well, no wonder, no wonder when I met him alone in his room, he took advantage of me. No wonder. And that's not to be angry about it, but that was like, that was like the defining moment when I went to that restaurant. That was when I went to that restaurant and I saw what they did. I was like, people are learning how to scam and mistreat others, steal from one another, rape one another, beat each other up. They're doing that and they're learning how to do it online from these online entrepreneurs. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. Some of them is not who they say they are. A lot of them are not who they say they are. And so you have to ask yourself now, when I went to go eat that nasty ass food and then I go to look at their Instagram and their Instagram is like Instagram famously perfect. It, it, when the food was dropped off at my table, had I had my phone, I'd have Instagrammed it because it was pretty, it was aesthetically pleasing, but it was so disgusting and wasteful. And I, when I got in the ocean, I said, no wonder y'all are dying like this. No wonder these fish is out here. You know, it used to be back in the day, you can go into the ocean and see the fish at your feet in California. Now I didn't see nothing but trash. I was under the impression that we all loved one another the same way. And so when I support online people or when I began to really work in social media, I wanted to find a tribe of people that rock with me the way that I rock with them. And the more I looked, the less I got. And so I said, interestingly enough, the only person who really gave me a shot was the same person that ended up taking advantage of me. And I thought to myself, this person is only doing this for a financial gain. I mean, maybe the rape is just a little extra. Maybe that was a little cherry on the top, whatever. But at the same time, I was like, this person is literally only doing this for, my, there's no love there. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no happiness in that situation. And you're perpetuating this image on social media that all is well and all is good, but you can't be. If you're doing things like this, it, you can't be. If you're lying and trying to get clout, then you can't be. Okay, that Patek on my wrist. Yo, bitch could have you over dipping dots, but I, the only ice cream that I cream is ice me, ice me. That new Patek, me likey. That Rolex, he bought me. That Lambo, he got me. But this pussy, uh, hell cat. And she bite back. She fuck back. And so I'm like, Y'all out here capping for clout and killing the fucking turtles, bitch. And I just don't have the patience to try to reparent a bunch of people that really should know better. Because when you know better, you do better. The world gets better. We all live a happier life. But y'all are too busy out here trying to like cap for clout. And for what? I thought I was going to have me a little, little... <laughs> I thought it was going to be a Barbie world when I went to Venice, bitch. And I was like, oh, this is not a Barbie world. And I'm not a Barbie girl, bitch, because if this is what Barbie was eating, then I don't know what part of Venice that they was on. Egregious. But the hotel, I said I was going to tell you about the hotel. And the hotel was actually a hostel. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you this story and give you the full experience, bitch. Because, you know, I live my life two different ways. I'm a little angel. I'm a little devil, bitch. And I, I am very authentically honest with my reactions. And when I walked into my hotel room after having seen it on Expedia, I thought I was getting into a five-star resort. I, the way that the photographs were positioned, you would think that this was like the most charming downtown apartment in New York City you'd ever been in. The exposed beams, the wood is showing, there's the brick that's there. And it was positioned so well and that when I got into my room and I saw what it really was, I was like, livid I was livid bitch I was like 
first of all, what's that smell? And why are you trying to not even plug in a, a Febreze plug in? It was one of them other ones. Why are you trying to cover up this scent of feces and sewer water? Eau du toilette with, I don't know, is that hibiscus bitch? Like, what is it? What is that? Why does it smell this way in this room? Once I got past that, I was like, why is this bed just a piece of little cardboard, a little piece of cardboard with some blankets on top? It was a full bed. It don't tell me it's a full queen. I know what I know what a queen bed looked like. And that's a full bed. And I'm glad the linen was clean. But where's my blanket? Oh, there's no air conditioning in this bitch. That's why I don't have a blanket. Okay, okay, okay. I'm by the beach. I know there's a breeze. Let me open these windows. The windows ain't got no fucking screens. I was like, no. No, 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 no. You're you're punking me right now. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll just talk to Expedia, get my money back and book somewhere else. Expedia said that it would take between two to three days for them to get a response from the owner because the owner is unresponsive. An unresponsive owner of a property that they are advertising for rent on their website was not talking and give it it's always like okay 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 it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay i make the most of it i I was like that's okay i'll open the windows about this much because the flies ain't gonna fuck with me they're not gonna just happen to get in there that one little tiny crack and then again i'll i'll ignore the smell it ended up being the best sleep I'd ever had in all of my life because of the fact that I had to ignore all the warning signs that were around me. I had to literally not worry about a thing in order to even like undress enough to take off my clothes to get in the shower to 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 really like. So it ended up being like the worst, best vacation ever because I knew when I went to Venice that the Lord had changed me from the inside out. I knew there was a higher power and I knew there was a reason for all of these things to have happened uh, to me. And so I was like, that hotel, that food, that ocean experience, All of that told me that we are in a humanitarian crisis. My apartment complex is a humanitarian complex, is a humanitarian crisis. The birds are starving to death in your trees because you don't water them, number one, because there's all these, this is summertime. Ain't should not be one dead leaf out there if you've been watering those trees and those trees are like dying they're rotting from the inside out they're literally rotting from the inside out because there's no water in them and again the birds are dying the birds are being poisoned they they don't have any food the fish the the seals in 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 venice beach don't have any fish further out so they're they're all by the shore trying to trying to trying to survive and here's the thing man we are the dominant force in this world the reason why everything is the way it is is because of us and so the oceans are praying to mother nature the seals are praying to the ocean okay the 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 shrimp is praying not to be smothered in fucking butter and put on instagram they want to feed the seal so that their their family, their their little ones can maybe one day reach maturity. Because if we overfish the oceans and eat up everything, they'd rather be eaten by the seals because at least the seals respect the cycle of life. They respect the circle of life. The seals eat the shrimp, the sharks eat the... the we're all one, but we are so disconnected as people from our culpability with the way that the world works and the way that all of this stuff is a, a manifestation of our own irresponsibility as people. I'm ended on this. My mama looking at me right here right now. And she died at 56 years old from congestive heart failure. She died with a blunt in her hand. It was on her her bedroom dresser, actually, okay? And she died alone in her bedroom because her doctor didn't think to offer her psychological counseling. 
because it's almost as if white and it's actually studies done serena williams almost died giving birth beyonce almost died giving birth and you are not talking to black women about their needs in their desires and their wants. Had someone addressed my mother's depression, she wouldn't have drank and smoked as much as she did. She would have, like what, like cardiologists with the American Heart Association or just whatever have placed out propaganda for what the last 25 years about how a factor in heart disease was African-American, like you being of black descent. One of those factors is that the other factor is being a woman. And so who are the most oppressed class of people besides children, women and nigga and, and black women, black women, especially, but black folks and women. And so I would always wonder to myself, why is it that, you know, your cardiolo or your, your cardiologist is not asking you if you're going to counseling most of the side effects on drugs these days are that you're going to end up with who knows suicidal thoughts or depression anxiety you know you got these people on rheumatism that people with rheumatism they're on um those what are those pills they're on steroids they're on all of these things that really if you just tell them to go get counseling they can probably just get off of medication boom bam boom like but it's almost as if the even like healthcare, they don't care enough about the people that they are treating. All they want to be is a doctor because you make a hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever you think you're going to make. Although you got to pay back them student loans, don't think it's free. Don't you think it's free, baby? Um, and they them them rack up two hundred thousand dollars like your whole but whatever that's that's your investment of your time, and so it's not about the money part of it, but about the the fact that so many people are replacing money with love. You are trying to get to your next patient because you don't have five extra minutes to ask my mom how she's feeling about life. Are you in a church? Do you have friends and family around you that you can vent to? Because if you keep all this on your heart, it will eventually fail you. Nobody's asking my mother these questions. When I go to the doctor, they're not asking me these questions. They're not offering to help treat my pain. They are not asking to help me in any way, shape, or form because their goal is not to help me. But at the end of the day, if you don't see me as a person, then how do you see yourself? If you don't love me, then you don't love you. You think you do because you got up today and you maybe went to go make some money because you got some money in your pocket. But do you really love yourself if you can't love other people, do you really love yourself if you are not able to really share heart space with someone that you don't know? If you can't say, hey, listen, Denise, peaches, baby, whatever, I would like for you to come back here in two weeks after going to go see a counselor to talk about what it is that you're holding on to that you can't let go. When did we replace humanity with profit? That is my question that I want for y'all to answer for yourselves. Of course, drop a comment down below and tell me what you've noticed in your own life. Uh, I talk a lot about me, but now I want to hear about y'all. You tell me what's up and I'll talk to y'all later. Love you. 602-549-4500 to book a session. Text or phone call. Since you've been old
Beyonce is so funny. I'm going down. Attract, drive, and boost average order values with Shopify's buy now, pay later solution. Y'all sound so good. Y'all remember the preacher's wife? Good. I know when y'all was younger and watching The Preacher's Wife, you was rooting for Dudley to snatch up Oh boy's bitch. Okay? I know I was. Years in a long, long time. Me too, bitch. Dudley. Y'all wanted him to have her. Me. 